talk about uh, the relationship between natural disasters, poverty reduction, and remittances. And this is a joint work with a colleague from uh, Ferdi, Alessandra Rabo. Um, it has been found in the literature that there is a negative relationship between natural disasters and economic growth, but also between natural disasters and poverty. However, uh, there is much less evidence on the role of uh, private mechanisms such as migrants transfer uh, on poverty when natural disasters occur in, uh, in poor countries. So we have few studies, uh, these three studies that look at uh, this, uh, this relationship, but we would like to contribute uh, much more and, and fill the, the, the gap in the literature. So we ask a simple research question. Do private funds such as uh, remittances help mitigate poverty in the context of natural disasters? Um, Contrary to what the, uh, other papers are doing, because other papers, they take a, a sample of poor countries and they look at the impact of uh, remittances after the uh, natural disaster occur. What we are going to do is that we take the sample of low and low middle uh, income countries. So these are very poor income countries. And we are going to look at the interaction between natural disasters and remittances on poverty variable, which is much more specific. And we are also um, looking at uh, macro data. Most of the studies uh, were conducted uh, at a country level. So we have a panel of 52 developing countries over 27 years, 1984 to 2010. And also maybe a novelty in this paper is that instead of taking um, measure of disasters such as the number of people affected or the, the damage, which is a kind of endogenous, because these are determined by the poverty level of countries, we are going to use some exogenous measure of the intensity of disaster. And I'm going to talk about this uh, later on. So we investigate the, the role of remittances in, in mitigating poverty in, in a context of disasters in a short-term perspective. So we use monetary uh, poverty from the world development indicators uh, as our main dependent variable. And we also try to deal with many of the endogeneity issues that we have by using fixed effect models, some alternative estimation, and a JMM model where we um, instrument our endogenous variable by their lacked values. So just to give you a flavor of the result, we found indeed a reducing effect of remittances of, on, uh, on poverty in countries that experience natural disasters. But very interestingly, what we found is that actually remittances decrease even more poverty when natural disasters um, occur in countries. And I'm going to, to uh, detail this later on. So we also run some uh, the, the analysis by looking at which type of disasters are driving our results, and we found out that the results are mainly driven by storms, hurricane, and extreme temperature events. So the literature, as I said, if we look at the relationship between natural disasters and poverty, um, it has been found for um, people belonging to the, to the middle income, let's say, distribution, that disasters can push these people into poverty uh, by destroying their assets, by eliminating their ability to rebuild their home or just securing their basic needs. And in, if we look at the poorest, actually disasters can even push them into a trap, right? So since poor countries, they generally live in, in very unfavorable conditions. They are already uh, in a vulnerable um, situation. So disasters will increase their, their poor economic status. However, it's important to highlight that there are some heterogeneity uh, of the effects of natural disaster on poverty, heterogeneity between the short term and the long term. And there is a very interesting paper by Ginu and Menendez. And what they do is that they look at the occurrence of earthquake in Indonesia since 1985. And interestingly, they find that after two years, so two years after the earthquake, indeed the disaster would uh, decrease the expenditure, right? The total expenditure and then disaster have a, a negative effect on, on welfare of household. But then between two and six years, they found out the, that the effect of disasters started to be mitigated. And then from, um, from um, uh, six to 12 years, they found that disasters has a positive effect on the welfare. And it's kind of very, um, 
uh, puzzling, but the way they explain it is, is that in the long term, the country has benefited from lots of public aid and good institution. And then the aid were very well managed. And then the, the negative effect, the primary negative effect of disasters were, ter were turned out to be, to be positive in the long term. So as I said, that's why we really pay attention here and we only focus on the effect of disasters and remittances on poverty in the short term. Um, so, I mean, there is a large body of the literature that look at the impact of remittances and in general, not only looking at remittances after natural disasters, it has been found that remittances indeed um, reduce poverty through uh, accumulation of human capital and physical capital, uh, also by reducing income inequalities and by increasing consumption. And when it comes to the specific case of disasters, it has been found that if household benefit from insurance mechanisms such as migrant transfer, this help them um, uh, increase their level of resilience in the aftermath of, uh, of shocks. Maybe here, because I thought I would not have uh, time, but I can just elaborate a bit more. It has also, so m most of these studies were conducted, uh, as I said, at a country level, right? And there is a one study that were conducted at a macro level. It's a study by Young, 2008, when he looks at um, rainfall shocks, and he found the same thing, basically. But this is the only macro study. So as I said, we use data from six, uh, 60. 52 low and low middle income countries. So this is the panel data. We look at uh, uh, from the data from 1984 to 2010. We uh, use two measures of poverty from, from World Bank database. We look at the poverty headcount ratio at $1.25 a day. And then we also look at as a robustness check, check the, the poverty gap at $2 a day. So our natural disaster variables are from the game data. So these were produced by Felbermeyer and Grosch. And what they do is that they use um, data from uh, geophysics and climatology. And they assess the intensity, what, what we can call exogenous measure of intensity of disaster. Exogenous because this is not like the number of people who were injured or who died or the damage caused. Because, uh, and I'll talk about this um, when I will discuss the hundred and ninety, this is very um, this is impacted by the poverty level of countries, right? So we use first uh, the disaster index, the aggregated disaster index, and then the disaggregated measure. So we have first the wind speed. So this is the maximum uh, wind speed in, in knots for storms and hurricane, and then uh, we use a measure of temperature, I haven't mentioned, but a measure of temperature, which is the difference between um, the maximum monthly temperature and the mean over the period. We also use a measure uh, for drought. So it's a dummy equal to one if in a country there is three successive months or five months in a year where the rainfall level is below 50% uh, compared to the mean over the period. Um, there is a measure of, um, for earthquake, so it's the maximum on the Richter, Richter, Richter scale. And we also use uh, the maximum uh, for, um, of volcanic explosive, explosivity index for volcanic eruptions. So our remittance variable represents the transfer received in the countries over the period. And we control for uh, various country characteristics. So we control for the quality of the institution through a measure for democratic or autoc autocratic countries. We also control for population variable, total population, and population density. Uh, we control for urbanization rate, which also capture internal migration. Uh, and we control for uh, the growth rate of uh, real GDP per capita, which uh, capture economic factors such as uh, unemployment and quantity and quality of, of infrastructure. So our model, we run a, a country fixed effect model where our main uh, interest variable is the interaction term between natural disaster and remittances. Um, we 
also add that disaster and remittances separately, and we add our control variables with when when you're lacked, because we assume that all of these variables are very endogenous, and it will be um, better to take when you're lagged, which makes them a bit more exogenous, right? Because they are affected by poverty as well. So we control for uh, time invariant country characteristic, which are unobservable by using a, a country fixed effect, and we add also some, some time dummies. About the endogeneity, we have many issues of endogeneity. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the first one um, is the potential measurement error of the number of intensity. Uh, um, or intensity of natural disaster due to misreporting or, uh, you know, maybe sometimes uh, government can inflate numbers for ad purpose and so on. Uh, also, the intensity of natural disasters, as I said, if you have an earthquake in Haiti uh, with the same level of intensity and in Japan, you would not necessarily have the same number of people affected. And this is due to the poverty level of the country itself, right? So the intensity of natural disasters may be influenced by the level of poverty. And then that's why uh, using uh, uh, an exogenous measure of disaster is, is very important in here. And maybe more seriously, it's the endogeneity of remittances. Ideally, we would have an instrumental variable which would affect uh, poverty only through its effect on on remittances, but we have not found it. So if you have ideas, they are very welcome. Uh, so what we do is that we, we try to, to manage this and try to run a series, a series of robustness tests. So just to explain maybe why we have an endogeneity issue, first of all, there is likely a reverse causality. So the amount of remittances received can also be explained by the level of poverty of a country. That's the first thing. Second. Poverty determines the location or even the migration choice and then the future receipt of remittances. It's very likely that poor people live in areas prone to disasters, for example, right? Or maybe they are uh, too poor so they cannot afford migration costs and even if this area is very prone to disaster, they might want to leave but they cannot. So we have to deal with this kind of, uh, kind of issues. So, the solution we find to mitigate the absence of instruments is that first we consider uh, our measure of remittances, the logarithm of remittances received one year before with a, um, a t minus one, so with one year lagged, instead of using a, a contemporaneous measure of remittances because it's very likely that the remittances that you receive in t minus one will affect your poverty in t, but the, the reverse is, is very unlikely. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we, we run a, a JMM model and we instrument our endogenous variables by their lagged values. We also control in our regression for time fixed effect, I said it, and we use disasters not, and remittances not only for T, but T minus one in the same regression. So to capture some kind of ex ante effect of, of remittances in, in, in helping household build resilience. I don't know if you see something. <laughs> so it's pretty small. Um, the, in the first two columns, we just run the plain regression. So the first column, we just look at the correlation between the interaction between remittances and disasters, and disasters and, and remittances without country fixed effect, without time fixed effect, just a random effect. And we find out that the interaction term is negative and significant, meaning that indeed, when a disaster occurs, uh, remittances help mitigate its effect on poverty. Disaster is positive, uh, su suggesting that it, it increases the, the poverty level of countries, and remittances uh, um, is negative. So we add our control variables, and uh, our results are, are robust to, to the, to the um, addition of these control variables. And then we run the country fixed effect. So we control now for unobservable time invariance country characteristics in, in column four and the result hold. We add the controls and our benchmark is the, the, the last regression, the, the column five, where we control for both country fixed effect and time fixed effect. And you can see that the interaction term between remittances and disaster is still negative and significant. 
disaster has the positive and significant sign. However, although remittances is negative, it lost its significance. So we have to be careful here because it doesn't mean that remittances do not have an effect anymore on poverty level. However, because this um, non-significant of remittance, it should be interpreted with the interaction term. And it just means that indeed when disaster occur, actually remit the impact of remittances on poverty is even stronger. Just to interpret the magnitude, so for countries experiencing, experiencing an increase in the disaster index by 1% and receiving the average logarithm of remittances, uh, in the sample, the poverty headcount ratio at $1.25 a day is expected to decrease by 1.15. And just we take the coefficient associated with the disaster index minus the coefficient as associated with the interaction term times the uh, average of logarithm remittances. So now we disaggregate the disaster index and we look at what drive our result right so we look at disaster by disaster so you can find you can see that for all of our disaster the interaction term is negative however the effect is only significant for wind speed so storms and hurricane the measure of storms and hurricane and temperature so the difference in in uh, extreme temperature events and drought suggesting that our results are driven by these three type of disasters. We start the series of robustness check where we control in our regression both for remittances and disasters, not only at T, but at T minus one with one year lag. Um, and we, we have the, the robust are, are still, the results, sorry, are still robust. And they are mainly driven by wind speed, temperature and drought. However, when we, so, we don't use any more remittances at T, but the lacked value of remittances, which is supposed to be more exogenous than remittances measure at T, we found out that our result for the aggregated measure still holds for wind speed and temperature. However, uh, drought lost its, uh, lost its significance. So if we want to be more conservative, we would say that our results are mainly driven by storms and, and um, hurricanes and uh, extreme temperature events. Um, so here we just run uh, the JMM estimation model and um, again it's the same and drought is not significant either. Um, and we change here the dependent variable. Instead of using uh, the poverty headcount ratio, we, uh, we use the poverty gap at $2 a day, which measure more the, the incidence and, and the depth of poverty. And we pretty much found, uh, found the same results as well. So what can we take from this? So private funds indeed, such as remittances, reduce poverty in the context of, of disasters. But interestingly, remittances also have an ex ante role uh, by helping households build their resilience to shock. Um, social networks and migrants uh, in, in particular are very important channels for countries, um, which, can, um, which can use them to deal with adverse, adverse effects of shock. And, just to compare with the results by Gino and Menendez, which show that public aid uh, could indeed help mitigate and even produce some positive effect on welfare, private funds can be used immediately after the shock. You know, public aid, they take time to be organized and so on, and may reach communities much later on. Whereas when it comes to remittances or migrant surfer or private insurance mechanism, when a shock happens, you, just, you can just send an SMS or call and say, you know, I have, there is an adverse shock here, I, I need some help and, and assistance. However, um, and I haven't mentioned this, but it, it's very important, and that would be the follow-up, to look at also effect on inequalities. Because what happened to people who do not receive remittances and who live maybe in very poor countries where governments are, um, uh, cannot really you know, um, help or the, the help would be limited? Because we know that maybe most of the migrants belong to the middle income distribution. And for these people, so 
the receptor of remittance can be positive, but it can also have some negative effect on inequalities for people who do not receive it. So we may want also to, to look at that in, in future research. And finally, so it's also very important to, to be able to combine both private mechanism and public mechanism um, in the aftermath of, uh, of shocks. And of course, I mean, this uh, has been said again and again, but I repeat it here, that would be also important to reduce the cost of sending remittances. Uh, it will overall have an impact on the amount that, that people, uh, people will receive after the shock. Yeah, thank you.